What Land Rover does differently is we start with the off-road side and we make them good on-road. Every other manufacturer has a vehicle that they try to make as good as possible on-road and then try to make it perform well off-road. That's the only reason, the, the major reason why we're the best 4x4x5. With this product, we have the ideal opportunity to shout about our four-wheel drive engineering expertise. As capable as Discovery is, Series, series 2 takes it another step forward. The on-road control of the vehicle, its handling behaviour, surpasses any sport utility vehicle that's currently in the marketplace. The breadth of capabilities and benchmark ride and handling of Discovery Series 2 are founded on a broad base of new leading-edge automotive technology. From the start, Land Rover engineers and project leaders took a clean sheet approach. Their objective was to create a completely new integrated package to improve ride, handling, comfort and capability under all conditions. Nothing was left untouched. In this program, we will begin with a look at Series 2 axles and suspension, components and systems that take the brunt of on- and off-road punishment. We will then turn our attention to important new features that make it simpler, easier, and safer for drivers to dish out that punishment. These include self-leveling suspension, or SLS, four-wheel electronic traction control, electronic brake force distribution, and hill descent control. Another major change we've made for Series 2 is on the, in the field of axles. Both front and rear axles have changed significantly. Uh, they've gone to the open yoke design as Range Rover currently has. The axles are approximately two inches wider than those on Discovery. An obvious feature when comparing the vehicles head-on. Fender flares and related body changes also give Series 2 a more robust and purposeful stance. The new axles allow for a wider variety of wheels and tires, including 8-inch alloy wheels and 18-inch 255 tires for improved road holding and handling. The axles are much simpler and more robust than they are on current Discovery. Uh, we've eliminated all the leak paths that uh, people have seen previously. On the front axle, radius arms on the Series 2 are longer than on Discovery. They provide longitudinal axle location and allow large articulation. The revised geometry of the radius arms in size and mounting angles also improves comfort by allowing easier vertical movement of the axle over road surfaces. Without proper radius arm location, the driver would, at one extreme, notice every bump on the road, or at the other extreme, be too isolated from the feel of the road. Each radius arm is connected to the axle via two bushings, and to the chassis by a third bushing. These bushings are tuned to optimize vehicle handling, as well as noise, vibration, and harshness, NVH. Another benefit of the new longer radius arms is that they are tuned to give a certain level of dive. Dive occurs when the front suspension compresses during braking, causing the front end to lower. While keeping brake dive to a minimum, Series 2 does maintain enough dive to give the driver sufficient braking feedback. Between the front axle and chassis, engineers have positioned a panhard rod to ensure that the axle remains centrally located. This provides lateral axle location, the geometry of which is tuned for excellent bump steer characteristics. New front springs also contribute to the refined road manners of Series 2. Single rate coil springs are fitted to the front axle, each with a tuned isolator between it and the chassis frame to reduce NVH and to improve ride. The Series 2 rear axle has similar improvements. New radius arms are designed to improve the level of anti-jacking, which is the amount the rear end lifts during braking. This improves braking stability and comfort. The rear coil springs are multi-rate, a design that provides a comfortable ride over a wide range of loads. Like the front axles, the rear axles are fitted with tuned isolators between the spring and chassis to improve NVH. 
For Series 2 vehicles without the optional ACE system, front and rear anti-sway bars are installed. Like ACE, anti-sway bars limit body lean and improve directional stability, but operate mechanically rather than electronically. While lacking active lean control, Series 2 vehicles without ACE still offer competitive performance when it comes to body lean and directional stability. The Watts linkage is one of the big differences between Series 2 and current Discovery. It replaces the A-frame and controls the lateral position of the rear axle, producing nearly vertical axle travel. This ensures that the advantages of the new rear radius arm geometry are fully exploited in producing a more car-like ride. It also results in improved axle articulation positioning during all axle movements. The Watts linkage is comprised of two links, fitted with chassis mounting bushings, and a center bearing fitted into a machined forging. It is mounted at the center of the rear axle and to either side of the chassis frame. Because the radius arms control longitudinal location of the axle, as well as the vehicle's reaction to hard braking, the Watts linkage need only control lateral location of the axle. This allows it to operate with softer bushings, producing a smoother ride with less noise, vibration and harshness. With the Watts linkage and improvements provided by the new Range Rover style front and rear axles, Series 2 offers marked improvements in ride and handling, whether or not the vehicle is equipped with ACE. On road, this means that driver and passengers are more isolated from bumps and rough surfaces. While off-road, hallmark features such as long wheel travel and large axle articulation are fully maintained or improved. New axles, state-of-the-art redesigned suspensions, and world-class on- and off-road performance might satisfy most engineers, but not at Land Rover. Yet another optional feature that separates the Series 2 from other compact sport utilities is SLS, self-leveling suspension. Rear air suspension, um, which we have here, is uh, totally new on Series 2 Discovery, um, and it replaces the coil spring that we have currently at the rear. So if the vehicle is heavily laden, the vehicle will, will return to its standard ride height position for more comfort on road. SLS is a new option on Series 2 that significantly improves ride and comfort. Its function is to keep the vehicle level under all loading conditions. SLS is not designed to give rapid height adjustment. Instead, it is designed to maintain a level ride height, whether carrying an unevenly distributed rear load or towing a heavy load. The system consists of an air distribution unit, a silencer, two height sensors, two air springs, an air suspension height switch, an SLS light, and an air suspension warning light. The self-leveling suspension operates automatically when the engine is running. At startup, the height sensors communicate with a self-leveling anti-lock brake electronic control unit or SLABS ECU. If the rear suspension is too low, the SLABS ECU activates the compressor, opens the left and right hand valve simultaneously, and allows compressed air to enter the air springs. The height sensors tell the SLABS ECU when the target height is reached, the compressor shuts down, and the spring valves close. Off-road, the SLABS ECU disables all leveling functions when the height sensors detect that the rear suspension is articulated more than approximately four inches. SLS operates in three main modes, normal, off-road, and extended mode. Off-road mode is selected by pressing the SLS switch on the dash. 
a single tone sounds. When released, the SLS light flashes to indicate a change of ride height. When the vehicle reaches its target off-road height, the SLS light stops flashing and remains lit. This feature is particularly useful when the departure angle is questionable. Extended mode provides Series 2 with extra ground clearance to pass over an obstacle. No driver input is required. Series 2 automatically goes into extended mode when the slab's ECU detects that the vehicle is high-centered and the rear wheels are spinning freely. The slab's ECU turns on the air compressor for 25 seconds and inflates the air springs to assist in regaining traction. With SLS fully articulated, the vehicle should then be able to proceed. While there are other SUVs and cars with self-leveling rear suspensions, none provide the versatility and benefits of SLS. And like the other revolutionary Series 2 technologies, SLS broadens the vehicle's capabilities, both on-road and off. Discovery Series 2 includes three important new braking system improvements that work in concert with the ABS system. Electronic Brake Force Distribution, EBD. Four-wheel Electronic Traction Control, ETC. And Hill Descent Control, HDC. Each has both on- and off-road benefits. Electronic Brake Force Distribution is designed to optimize braking performance under all loading conditions. Its benefit is primarily on-road. Because Series 2 is capable of towing and carrying heavier cargo than any other vehicle in its class, it must brake effectively whether carrying a light or heavy load. A vehicle's center of gravity varies depending upon passenger and cargo placement and whether or not it is towing a load. This then affects braking. When carrying only a driver, a vehicle center of gravity lies farther forward than when towing a trailer. To the braking system, this means that more force must be applied to the front brakes than the rear brakes to guard against rear wheel lockup. EBD operates by monitoring the ABS wheel speed sensors during braking to detect variations in wheel speeds between front and rear axles. It then automatically optimizes overall braking performance over a wide range of vehicle load conditions. Working without driver input, EBD helps to maintain steering control and handling predictability. Provide maximum braking efficiency under all conditions. Improve light, medium and heavy load braking ability. Eliminate premature operation of ABS and increase driver confidence. Perhaps no new system on Series 2 goes farther in extending the performance and security of permanent four-wheel drive than four-wheel electronic traction control. Four-wheel traction control is uh, beneficial both on and off-road um, in low, slippy situations. By utilizing the ABS sensors and brakes on all four wheels, ETC is able to minimize wheel spin while precisely distributing torque to those wheels that have traction. ETC is so good, there is no longer any need for a locking center differential. One of the primary reasons ETC is so beneficial is that it automatically adjusts for all types of terrain and weather. On road, it controls wheel spin from side to side on slippery surfaces and differing grip conditions. Off road, ETC works when grip varies between the right and left wheels, such as when climbing loose rock or driving through patches of mud. While four-wheel electronic traction control requires no driver intervention, it will generally not operate above 31 miles per hour. 
Land Rover's four-wheel electronic traction control system provides highly effective grip and control when it is most needed. It aids acceleration from a standing start in icy conditions, sustains forward motion in difficult off-road conditions, maintains vehicle control in varying grip conditions, and makes the driving experience simpler and safer. Working as part of the Series 2 ABS system, Hill Descent Control, or HDC, automatically and intermittently applies the brakes to each wheel when the vehicle is in low range and descending a hill. This slows the wheels but does not allow them to lock up. HDC automatically adjusts for any loss of grip without driver intervention. And it operates in low range and it basically looks at all of the, the, uh, the wheel speeds uh, and controls those using the ABS system so that there's no um, locking of any wheels when you're going down steep hills. The system is activated by selecting low range in the transfer gearbox and depressing the HDC button. The green HDC lamp then illuminates. The brake lights come on when the system is operating. HDC has a fail-safe mode in the event the switch is accidentally turned off while the system is operating. Instead of abruptly turning off, HDC will enter fade-out mode. It fades out gradually over a period of time and also warns the driver that he's, he's fading out the hill descent function. Contrary to intuition, HDC does not have a measurably adverse effect on brake wear. This is because the vehicle maintains a slow, steady downhill speed and full brake force is not applied. HDC is effective in snow, mud and ice, and while towing, provided the vehicle is in low range. Like four-wheel electronic traction control, hill descent control makes off-road driving simpler and more convenient. It operates in a wide range of conditions, enhances driver capabilities, driver control, and most importantly, confidence. The sport utility segment is booming in popularity. In response, more and more manufacturers are jumping on the bandwagon. Only Land Rover has remained true to its expertise and passion, building the best 4x4s by far. In Discovery Series 2, Land Rover has blended evolutionary design with revolutionary technology, and the result is a new compact SUV benchmark, perhaps Land Rover's finest example of engineering ever. The list of firsts include active cornering enhancement, electronic brake force distribution, self-leveling suspension, four-wheel electronic traction control, hill descent control, and more. This Series 2 technology not only takes Land Rover's legendary off-road capabilities a generation ahead of competitive products, it puts its on-road comfort, safety, ride, and handling on the same level as many European sedans. In some ways, it even exceeds them. The real um, attraction of the technology, I think, is that it really enables this uh, really quite car-like experience um, and yet still extends the off-road capability. So it's really quite thrilling. At the end of the day, you, you just can't beat the fun and the exhilaration you get from driving these vehicles in the conditions that they love best, the most extreme conditions. What we have to do is communicate that fun and exhilaration and get our customers behind the wheel and then they'll find out what the Land Rover experience really means.